Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about how to use Python to perform optimization analysis. Another term for optimization analysis is linear programming. To make the terms consistent with other classes, from this lecture, I will call optimization analysis linear programming. If you want to perform linear programming, no matter which software you are using, basically you need to go through three major steps. First, you need to identify the objective variable, identify your goal. Second, you want to identify the decision variables in your question. Then you want to build something called an objective function. An objective function is basically a mathematical equation between the objective variable and the decision variables. You want to use the mathematical relationship to show how the decision variables influence you to reach the objective variable. The last step is very important. We want to identify the constraints in our question. Constraints refer to the limited amount of resources we are facing. If you have unlimited resources, of course, you can perform your analysis without any boundary. But in reality, every company, every person, every organization is facing constraints, is facing the limited amount of resources. That's why we want to identify the constraints. Then we want to build the objective function according to the constraints, according to what we have in reality. This is the major step of uh, performing linear programming. If you just get in touch with this topic, if you are not very familiar to the fundamentals of linear programming, I listed the linear programming fundamental lecture videos link in this video's description section. Please review those videos in order to get familiar to the concepts in linear programming. I will not repeat the fundamentals here. Next, I want to use an example to show everyone how to use Python to perform linear programming. A company wants to maximize the profit by selling two types of bags, standard bags and deluxe bags. If the company sells a standard bag, the company can get a profit of $10 from each standard bag. If the company sells a deluxe bag, the company can get a profit of $9 from each deluxe bag. The manager wants you to calculate how many standard bags and deluxe bags companies should sell respectively in order to maximize the total profit. We need to use the guideline we just discussed to identify the objective variable and decision variables for this case. The objective is to maximize total profit right? How can we calculate the profit? The total profit is dependent on the number of bags we should sell in each type. So let's use uh, letter S to denote the number of standard bags we will sell in a total. And we use the letter D to denote the number of deluxe bags we will sell in a total. Then we can build an objective function like uh, this one. Total profit equals to 10 times S plus 9 times D. According to this objective function, we can see that the more bags the company sell, the more profits the company will get if the company doesn't have any manufacturing capacity limit. But that's impossible in reality. The company is facing the manufacturing limit. Let's take a look at those constraints. In order to manufacture one bag, this bag will go through four departments in this company. Cutting and dyeing, shoeing, finishing, inspection, and packaging. The table on this slide shows everyone how long it will take for one bag to go through one department. Let's use a standard bag as an example. Let's say we want to manufacture a standard bag. Then it will take cutting and dyeing department 0.7 hours to manufacture this standard bag. Once this department is done, the bag will move to the next department. 
according to the table you can see, it will take the sewing department about 0.5 hours to manufacture one standard bag. Then the standard bag will move to finishing department. It will take a one hour for finishing department to manufacture this bag. Then it will move to the last department, inspection and packaging. It will take about 0.1 hours for this department to finish up this standard bag. Of course, this table also shows everyone how long it will take each department to manufacture a deluxe bag. No matter how many standard bags and deluxe bags you want each department to work on, they are all facing capacity limits. For example, the available hours in cutting and dyeing is 630. The available labor hours in sewing is 600 and so on and so forth. How can we transform these capacity limits into constraints? Here they are. Let me use the cutting and dyeing as an example. We just said that it takes cutting and dyeing 0.7 hours to manufacture one standard bag. And we want the company to manufacture S units standard bags. So the total hours we need from the cutting and dyeing department for manufacturing total standard bags should be 0.7 times S. We also said that it takes cutting and dyeing one hour to manufacture one deluxe bag. We want the company to manufacture D units. So the total hours we need from cutting and dyeing to manufacturing D units deluxe bags should be one times D. 0.7 times S plus one times D is the real number we need from the cutting and dyeing department. No matter how long it will be, 0.7 times S plus 1 times D cannot exceed the capacity limits of cutting and dyeing department. Therefore, 0.7 times S plus 1 times D should be less than or equal to 630 hours. You can use the same logic to build other constraints for other departments, as you can see on this slide and the next slide. I will not repeat it here. Here we also have a, a implicit constraint. No matter what the value for S and D will be in the future, they cannot be negative. So we have a S greater than or equal to zero and a D greater than or equal to zero. Let's use Python to answer this question. Python is very powerful. However, Python doesn't offer linear programming package directly. We have to use some third-party packages. There are tons of options. In this lecture, I want to showcase the pop function, P-U-L-P. Let's take a look at it. Let's launch Jupyter Notebook. By the way, if you haven't installed Jupyter Notebook, I listed the installation guide in this video's description section. You can find a folder to save the uh, Jupyter Notebook file. I will save it into Documents, and then click a New in the top right corner, and then choose Python 3. If you haven't installed the pop function, you need to use the pip function to install it. The line is pip install pulp. PULP is the pop function package name. And then click uh, Run. I have installed it, so you can see all requirements are satisfied. If you install pop for the first time, you will see a message showing you your installation is finished. Once the installation is done, you don't have to install it for the next time. You just need to install it once. Now we can use the pop package. Let's find a new cell in Jupyter Notebook and then type in import pop. We want to let the Jupyter Notebook know that we want to use the pop package. First, we need to use the LP variable function in the pop package to define decision variables. I want to use letter D to denote the number of deluxe bags we want to manufacture. 
equals to pop dot lp variable and then parentheses. Between parentheses, we want to type in two single quotes. And then between two single quotes, we want to type in D. We want to let the pop package know that letter D is to denote a decision variable. And then a comma. After the comma, we want to type in the low bound option. Low bound equals to zero. This means no matter what the value for D is, D cannot be negative. D must be greater than or equal to zero. And then I want to use letter S to denote the number of uh, standard banks we want to manufacture. Basically, you can copy the D line and then paste it and then change to S equal to pop.lp variable. Change D to S, uppercase S, and the low bound for S is also zero. S must be greater than or equal to zero, non-negative. This is how we define the decision variables in pop function. Next, we need to build the objective function. I want to use variable profit to represent the objective variable. Let's type it in. Profit equals to pop dot lp problem and then parentheses between parentheses we need to specify two values first let's type in two single quotes between the single quotes we need to type in maximum profit here maximum profit is just a label to show the purpose of this analysis and then a comma and then we need to type in pop dot lp maximize now we need to let the pop package know that we want to create a variable profit to represent the objective variable and we want to find the maximum value for this objective variable that's why after the comma we type in pop dot lp maximize we want to find the maximum value next we want to build the objective function profit plus equal to 10 times s plus 9 times d here you find a new symbol plus equal to that means we want to keep adding some functions into the variable profit you can also add some notation for this uh, function. Type in a comma and then two single quotes. And then you can see objective function. Notice that uh, the notation is optional. If you don't want to add the notation, you simply remove comma and the notation. You just uh, type in the objective function. But uh, if you want to make the objective function more readable to other data user and the programmer, you can add the notation, a comma, and then includes the objective function, this notation between two single quotes, but it's optional. And then we can add the constraints into profit. Profit plus equal to, 7 divided by 10 times s plus d and this total must be less than or equal to 630. The capacity limits of the cutting and dyeing department. You can also add a notation, comma, two single quotes. You can write constraint We can add a constraint for cutting and dye. And then we can copy this line and then paste them into other constraints. Profit for the second department showing 1 over 10 
1 over 2 times s plus 5 over 6 times d less than or equal to 600. You can find the, the constraint requirements in the point points. I listed the point points in this video's description section. This is the constraint for sewing. And then you can keep pasting the first line, profit plus equal to S plus two divided by three times D. And this total must be less than or equal to 708. And this is a constraint for finishing department. And then the last constraint is 1 over 10 times s plus 1 divided by 4 times d. This total must be less than or equal to 135. This is a constraint for inspection and uh, packaging department. I will use IMP to represent this. Then we are ready to solve this question. The function of solving a linear programming question is solve function. You just type in profit dot solve. Basically, this means you give every objective function constraint into the variable profit. So the profit has the linear programming system, and then you use the solve function to find the value. If you want to see the result, Right. First, you want to see the values for decision variables. You want to figure out how many standard bags and deluxe bags we want to manufacture. Then you can use the for loop to find the values. Let me type it in. First, let's add a label. Let's type in print. Decision variable values. And then after the print function, let's use a for loop to find the value. For variable in profit dot variables. Print. Next, we also want to find the value for objective variable, profit, right? We'll be using the pop value function. Let's take a look at the result. Here's the result. The maximum profit we can reach is $7,668 according to the capacity limits our company is facing. In order to reach this profit, we need to manufacture 252 deluxe bags and 540 standard bags. This is how we use Python and POP package to answer a linear programming question. I will also list the Python script into this video description section. For interested classmates, you can download this script and try it out by yourself.